All right, welcome to the 23rd episode of my weekly advanced English lessons. I always create these lessons from current events, maybe some lighthearted topics like a, a world record that has been broken or things that happen within my life that I can share and then from that build a lesson. So today I have a special treat. I will start with a video that I made. It's about three and a half minutes long. It starts out with mulberries and it finishes with turtles. And then from there, we'll, we'll go through our lesson. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and watch the video and you can uh, listen from that. So let's see what we got here. Um, how are we going? Where's the video at? The video is there somewhere. There it is. Here we go. Boom. Okay, yeah, I'm sharing my screen. There we go. All right. Here we go. Hopefully the audio is there with you. I'll give you a little update of the turtle pond. But first, look at our mulberries. There are many mulberries. They're a little sour when they they're red, but it's hard get them when they're dark purple because the birds come and eat them. Now mulberries, you might recognize the mulberry leaf. This is what silkworm eat. Silkworm, I don't know if they eat anything other than mulberry leaves. Um, and here are the mulberries. There's a lot of mulberries. And mulberry That's leaves are good too. Make tea. That's not what I'm here to show you. I'm here to show you the addition or, or the progress of the turtle town. We've got our stepping stones and some of these stepping stones. Then I'm doing some little mosaic brick work. These are all broken bricks. It's kind of mosaic it around. But anyway, that's really just so you don't get muddy. This is a, a filter and it has a UV light so it kills bacteria when the water goes in. And then some of it is dumped out here into that. And I've got some moss. We've got turtles in here, turtles and sucker fish. I'm gonna get some more fish. You might be able to spot some. And I'll put some plants on this side and then I'm still working on this water fountain. I'm going to be putting ferns and orchids and different kinds of plants that can grow on this rock, as well as this one. This one is this climber over here. This kind is going to climb up and just cover this completely there. And I've got one more fern in this tree over here. If you can take a look over here, this is that. This is the water filter box. The water comes through here and there's a UV light back there. Those UV lights are to kill bacteria. Uh, some of the water comes up, it gets sucked up through the filter. And then some of it goes here before it gets to the filter. That was the only way I was really able to do it without having two pumps. And then this one just dribbles down, water just dribbles down the wall. And I'm going, yeah, I'm getting moss and ferns and, and plants are just going to be growing out of this. But that takes some time because they need to grow their roots on there. I'm going to start them out from the bottom and they're going to kind of climb their way up. And there are a couple different plants in here, some water plants that potentially can connect to the wall and connect to the cement, connect to the rocks. I wonder if we see any turtles. Are there any turtles? We can see, I think that is a turtle, right? There now. Oh, there's a turtle right there. There's a little turtle. He's cutie. Oh, he's trying to bite me. Oh, he's trying to bite me. 
Well, he's trying to bite me. Hey, you gonna bite me? Yeah. I don't want any trouble. All right, so there we go. That's how we're starting out this uh, this lesson. But now we'll get right into it. Now, in this lesson, I did a listening comprehension at first. So if you want, you can not read this and just listen to it. That's how this was given uh, to my students. They didn't see this. If you want to read along, of course you can. And then the questions that follow are based on just listening comprehension. Again, there may be times where answers, there's more than one correct answer, but it's based on listening comprehension. So we're going by what um, the information that I give in this. Mulberry bushes are fascinating plants with a special connection to both a delicious fruit and an important cultural practice, especially in China. The leaves of the mulberry bush are the favorite nourishment of silkworms, those tiny creatures responsible for producing silk, a luxurious fabric, highly prized throughout history and a major contribution to Chinese culture and economy. As silkworms munch on the soft green leaves, they start the incredible process of spinning silk, which has clothed emperors and inspired countless fashion trends worldwide. But mulberry bushes don't just nourish silkworms. They also bear mulberries, a sweet and juicy fruit that can range in color from red to deep purple. While people in China cherish mulberry leaves for their role in silk production, in Thailand, where I live, we look forward to the season when mulberry bushes are laden with ripe berries. It's a time of joy as the bushes become full of delicious fruits that are not only tasty, but also packed with vitamins. It's interesting to note that not all mulberry bushes are grown for their fruit. Some are specifically cultivated for their leaves to nourish silkworms. This distinction underlines the dual significance of the mulberry bush bridging cultures through both a shared love for its fruit and the ancient art of silk making. All right, so here we go. We have some questions. That's it. And then we have a reading comprehension and followed by questions. So that's the focus of this week. Here we go. The first question here is, what is the primary use of mulberry leaves? Tricky question, really, but it is as part of the silk production process. The leaves, of course, are the food for the silkworm. Uh, sometimes that was a difficult connection to make for my students, but it is part of the silk production process. It is also a part of Chinese medicine. That's true, but I didn't mention it in uh, my my uh, little speech about the passage. So again, create dyes for clothing. Perhaps the berries, I know berries can be used for dyes, but we're talking specifically about the mulberry leaves. To cook as a vegetable, yeah, you can eat them. Like I said, they're more like tea and 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 in Chinese medicine, but uh, I, I imagine you could fry them up as well if you really wanted to. Again, based on what you hear. What color can mulberries be? Again, that was just a use of the word deep purple. So red to deep purple, which is like a dark purple. We really only use the adjective deep for deep blue, deep purple, things that, that like in, in uh, the darker colors. Uh, naturally, I wouldn't really say a deep red or deep yellow or deep green so much. Um, how does the passage describe the importance of silk? Go ahead and look at all those. Definitely not inexpensive fabric, right? A fabric for everyday wear, especially sports attire? No, probably not. I can't even think of any. Uh, well, actually, Muay Thai uh, shorts are made from silk. But generally, yeah, of course not. And as a luxurious fabric, highly prized throughout history is the correct answer. Uh, obviously not just a fabric used in China and Thailand. So uh, which word in the passage is synonymous with nourish? Again, if you read it, you saw the, this word was highlighted. It would come up. Uh, nourish is a, is a verb. So feed, nourishment is synonymous with 
food. It's a noun. And what do people in Thailand look forward to regarding mulberry bushes? Again, according to what I read, me and my family at least, we do. Uh, we love our mulberries. We just had some shake them up with a little bit of salt on them, and, and they're actually delicious. They're sour when they're red, uh, but but the birds always eat them, like I was saying, when, when they uh, get ripe. So they're delicious. Of course, the answer here is uh, the season when bushes are full of ripe berries. And how does the passage contrast the uses of mulberry bushes in China and Thailand? Again, the, in this, focusing on the leaves in China and focusing on the fruit in Thailand. Although, of course, um, all of my students, yeah, a lot of them hadn't eaten the mulberries. They, but mulberry bushes grow. A lot of them have seen them, or uh, they could get mulberries at stores. So basically, and silk is made in Thailand. So obviously, they are both used. But again, according to the what I read, that was the way the my presentation was divided. So it is important to see that this following one was it is a reading comprehension. So I would let my students, I'd give them one minute. So if you want, you can give yourself one minute, pause the screen and read this on your own. I'll go ahead and read it. Um, Turtles with their ancient lineage tracing back millions of years present a fascinating study in resilience and adaptation. These reptiles found in diverse habitats across the globe exhibit remarkable biological traits that set them apart from other species. Turtles are categorized into various types, each suited to its environment, be it in domestic settings, as pets, serene pond dwellers, or masters of the wild. As pets, turtles require specific care, thriving in environments that mimic their natural habitat. Aquatic turtles, for instance, need water bodies to swim, while terrestrial turtles demand spacious enclosures with ample hiding spots. The dietary needs of turtles also vary, with some being herbivores and others being omnivores, highlighting their adaptivity. In ponds, turtles play pivotal roles in the ecosystem, maintaining the balance by controlling insect populations and contributing to the health of aquatic plants. Their shells in evolutionary marvel provide protection and support with the carapace upper shell and plastron lower shell made of bony structures covered in scutes. In the wild, turtles exhibit extraordinary navigation skills with sea, turtle, sea turtles famously migrating thousands of miles to return to their nesting beaches. This homing instinct, coupled with their longevity, makes turtles emblematic of endurance and the mysteries of nature. Turtles around the world vary vastly, from the diminutive speckled pad loper of South Africa, barely larger than a standard smartphone, to the imposing leatherback sea turtle, which can weigh over 900 kilograms. These different these differences underscore the evolutionary pathways that turtles have navigated, adapting to niches and surviving in an ever-changing world. So here we go. The questions that follow here uh, include, what is a key factor in a turtle's survival in different environments? Obviously not their ability to fly, but their uh, adaptive adaptability and specific care needs uh, is true because they definitely do not prefer uh, cold temperatures because they're cold-blooded. They do need to find a warm spot or they'll burrow in a hole to hibernate uh, in a cold area. We don't get, it's not too cold here, so we'll be pretty good. We're going to get large turtles too, uh, uh, not just the aquatic uh, turtles. But so far, we just have the aquatic ones. Uh, what are the two main parts of a turtle's shell called? These are the parts like dorsal fin, like the back for dolphins. These are different parts, the crest, the trough. But this is the carapace and plastron. Not that important if you didn't know that, but it's more of a reading. Were you able to recognize given? I wouldn't expect you to just remember those, but given those, you perhaps should be able to. 
recall the information correctly. Uh, the next question is, which turtle is known for its massive migratory journeys? Is it the box turtle, the painted turtle, or the sea turtle is correct answer. There we go. Next one is, how do turtles contribute to pond ecosystems? By pollinating aquatic plants through water, oxygenation is not correct. By maintaining balance through insect control is correct. Obviously not singing to attract fish. Uh, what distinguishes the leatherback sea turtle in terms of size? It's the largest. Is correct. Turtle's evolutionary history spans how many years? Now, I, I did this. A lot of my students is, are large numbers can be difficult, so I, I kind of focused on this. I actually had a different um, lesson I brought up reviewing large numbers. You might get that sometime. Tens of thousands, that's how we say that. It, you know, 10,000 years, but more than 10,000 years, but not quite 100,000 years. We would say tens of thousands of years. If it's hundreds of thousands of years, you know, basically up to a million, over 100,000, at least 200,000, hundreds of thousands of years, or millions of years. And that is the correct answer, millions of years. Uh, the dietary habits of turtles can be described as? Now, remember, we, we talked about omnivores. These, the noun is an omnivore, herbivore, carnivore. This is as an adjective. adjective omnivorous, carnivorous, herbivorous, right? So you have to know these. We did talk about these last week. Do you know these terminology? Uh, carnivores, carnivorous means to, to eat meat, uh, just meat. Herbivorous are the herbivores who eat just plants. And fungus, which is a completely different kingdom, at least, or give me another name. Um, omnivores are the ones that will draw from from both categories. Could be op opportunivores. Also, some people would say that um, you know whatever's available. The turtle. The turtles are herbivorous or omnivorous, right? They're either herbivores or omnivores. There is one turtle that's om it's an opportunivore basically, and it's almost uh, carnivorous completely. But it just kind of eats it, it, it's like scavenges and um, eats like scraps and dead animal parts, but also eats plants. Just kind of eats whatever is there. But most most turtles I think are omnivorous that they're eating insects. Um, the aquatic turtles I think probably, but but maybe some are are completely um, herbivores, and uh, some of the Land dwelling ones are herbivores as well. And let's see if I have a uh, final one here. Uh, which trait is not associated with turtles? Homing instinct is, they, they do travel. Ability to change colors, that one obviously is not correct. Longevity, most people do know and are aware that uh, turtles live a long time, can outlive me, perhaps. And that wraps it up for a lesson. The lesson was a little uh, shorter today um, because I did have some extra activities, a lot of discussion and conversation about these topics, about mulberries and about turtles and about pets. And then there were some side, uh, little side lessons I did have about like big numbers. Big numbers are important to, to know how to read them, especially in some in some languages the way you break them up are different, right? Is you have your own word for like 10,000. It's not 10,000. And to see the word, we, we basically, we've got a thousand, 10,000, a hundred thousand, then a million, a million, 10 million, a hundred million, a billion, 10 billion, a hundred billion, a trillion, 10 trillion, hundred trillion, quadrillion. Um, and that wraps it up for me today. I hope you enjoyed this lesson and, uh, I'll give you updates on my pond. That's also, of course, just on my regular Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and whatnot. I update, uh, the farm and everything I'm doing here. Uh, but this is part of my English teaching experience. I hope you enjoy the journey. See you next time. Goodbye.